Welcome. A couple things to go over today. First of all, I'd like to say happy Thanksgiving to all those of you who are in the States. And if you're outside the United States, welcome to the channel. First thing I'd like to ask is if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, if you like the information that is being put out here, please think about subscribing to the channel. It helps us out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Okay, two things to go over today. First thing we're going to talk about is Tone Vase, and this is about technical analysis and what he believes or where Bitcoin is going. Second one, our second article we're going to talk about is the Bitcoin halving and how this will solve the price woes as reported from Blockstream CSO Samson Mao. So let's get into it. First things first, Tone Vase is a technical analysis. Now, if you've been with the channel for a little bit, <clears throat> channel is very new, but you know that I do not believe in technical analysis. Now, if you're a technical analysis guy or gal, so much the better. I just don't believe in it. I don't see the relevancy. And as time has gone on, I've been in this game for two to three years now. I've seen so much technical analysis that is consistently wrong. It amazes me. So let's talk about what Tone Vase says. So if you're not familiar, Tone Vase, he is a influencer. He is a person on Twitter, and he talks about how Bitcoin price is going to go to $4,500. So Tone, or Tony Vase, a derivatives trader and analyst, begs to differ. In this article, they talked about how it would bottom out at $6,000, which it did not. He states, according to his most recent tweet, Tony thinks Bitcoin is pulling back to $4,500. Tony stated that he actually made this prediction six months ago, when the price of Bitcoin was pretty much the same, but in a bull run. So let's take a look at what the heck that all means. So six months ago, today is November 28th, it's Thanksgiving 2019. Six months ago would be around June or so. So the price back then was uh, $8,000, we'll say, right? The lowest point, maybe 7,900. So as you can see, as time has gone on, it didn't touch anywhere near $4,500. I think the lowest it went to was uh, 75, $7,000, Six months ago, Tony believed it was going to $4,500. And this is what gets me about technical analysis. They don't give you like a real time frame. They just say, oh, it's going to go to $4,500. And what is always shocking to me is how there are two professions in the world. There are two professions in the world where you can be consistently wrong and still keep your job. One is the weatherman. Two is technical analysis. It shocks me that they can keep making predictions like this and people actually will listen to this bullshit. I just don't understand, but I'm not a very smart guy, so what can you say? I believe that technical analysis does have its place in places like the stock market, derivatives, those types of things, or that has been proven in some cases for the people who are the top tier type of technical analysis people. They can take a look, they can say, well, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. They've been very rich. However, cryptocurrency and digital assets are a whole new market. It is a whole new way of looking at things. And I do not believe that taking that type of knowledge base and applying it to cryptocurrency is correct. And time and time again, I've been proven right because I've never seen a technical analysis. Not never. I rarely see a TA person who just nails it time after time after time after time. It just doesn't happen. So... This is what I believe. If you disagree with me, go ahead and tell me how wrong I am in the comment section. Or if you do agree, let me know. Moving on, let's talk about the next Bitcoin happening and how this will all be dictated by miners. So Samson Mao, the Blockstream CSO, states that there are roughly 150 days remaining until the third Bitcoin halving or halving. Over the last seven days, Bitcoin has declined by 17.5%. Now, this was written on November 24th, and we did see a huge dip. Now, I think we're around $7,200 as of November 28th. But he goes on to say, currently, miners are rewarded 12.5 Bitcoin for every block mined. That is happening right now. But after next year's halving in May 2020, this is set to reduce to only 6.5 Bitcoin. With income income with income slashed in half, miners will either unplug their equipment or hodl their Bitcoin stashes until Bitcoin price rises to a price that does not go below their break-even point. A new equilibrium price will then arise after supply and demand economics come into play. This was the whole crux of the article, and it got me to thinking, well, how much does it cost 
to mine Bitcoin. I have no idea. So there's another YouTube channel by the name of Mr. Kristoff, and I will put him in the link below. He is an actual Bitcoin miner. He has his own small farm, and he knows this uh, stuff backwards and forwards. So I urge you to take a look at his channel for more in-depth knowledge of mining. But for me, my question was, how much does it cost and how does it all work? Now, I knew the basics, but I wanted to delve a little bit deeper and I wanted to get the information and then break it down to make it simple. So if you're like me and you had a couple of questions, hopefully I can answer them right now and I can talk specifically about this article and how it will relate to May 2020 and how I do believe that this will happen as far as the miners go and will raise the price. Let's, let's dig in. So first off, we got to look at, well, how much does it cost to mine today? So this was on November 11, 2019 from you today. It states Bitcoin mining breaks even at $8,000, 8K just to mine Bitcoin. Now, from what this article states, that doesn't include the cost of the rig itself. So you have to purchase these Bitcoin mining rigs. They look something like this, an ant miner, or if you're on a farm and you want to put a lot of money into it, there you go. So they're gonna cost you anywhere from $5,000, $7,500. Just depends on the model that you get and how powerful it is, just like the computers that we have today. So moving forward, they say yes, 8K is what it takes to mine one Bitcoin. And they talk about down below the mining difficulty and the terahashes and what that all means as far as price goes. So that started to get me thinking again, what exactly is the hash rate? What exactly is difficulty? So real quick as a review, the hash rate, can be defined as the speed at which a given machine or mining machine operates, how fast it is, how powerful it is, how it can solve these mathematical computations, which will allow a miner to claim their Bitcoin reward. So crypto mining involves finding blocks through complex computations, and they're like mathematical puzzles. Again, this is what they look like, essentially, and you're going to have a big mining farm like that. Mr. Kristoff himself has a big one. <laughs> Mr. Kristoff himself has a mining farm and he's got some more information on that. Check out his channel. Good stuff. So let's talk about difficulty then. So if you have the hash rate, those are the computations. Well, what's the difficulty part? Well, difficulty is a parameter that Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies use to keep the average time between blocks steady as the network's hash power changes. So what does that mean? Well, first, let's just take a look at a, at a quick graph. And this is the last two years. This is the hash rate of the Bitcoin network. And this is the difficulty of the Bitcoin network. See how they are pretty much in line? So this is how it works. So with the hash rate, so we have more and more computers coming on board. Back in 2009, 10, there was just a couple Bitcoin mining machines. Then we made to these big, huge farms. Now, if you can think about these big, huge mining farms, 100, 200, 300 across the whole globe, and they're just all their job to do is to sit on these shelves, do these mathematical computations, and find Bitcoin. So if you start here with one small computer, one Bitcoin mining rig, difficulties about a one, January 11, 2009. Pretty simple, right? There's not much hash rates going on, which means the difficulty is pretty easy to find one Bitcoin. Oh, if we could only go back in time. However, as time has gone on, people catch up. I say, wait a second, I can make money doing this. And as we go forward, the difficulty increases and goes up and goes up and goes up because more and more people are going from one of these, two of these in their home, to a big farm, and before you know it, the computational powder explodes exponentially, which means the more hash rate we have on the network, the more difficult it is for those miners to claim those rewards. So this also got me to thinking, in May 2020, as the reward is cut in half, so all this hash rate power and all this difficulty, all the things they have to do right now, and they're just breaking even at 12 and a half Bitcoin per block, what's gonna happen when it's 6.25? Well, just like the article stated, these miners, especially the small ones, are going to shut things down. They're going to shut things down and say, look, I can't make a profit. Why would I keep doing this? Now, the bigger ones, the big mining farms, they're going to stay up. And they're going to say, look, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to keep doing this, but I'm not going to sell my Bitcoin. If it takes me $8,000 and the Bitcoin price is at seven or whatever it's going to be at, on May 2020, I'm not going to sell. I'm gonna hold this 
Bitcoin. I'm going to keep it with us. And once it goes to a break-even point or beyond, then I will sell. So what is that going to do with the price? So if you've got miners right now who are dumping Bitcoin because they're like, well, I need some money here. I need to use my mining rigs to get as much Bitcoin as I possibly can and then dump it on the market. What happens? The supply, there's plenty of supply to go around. But as time goes on and these small miners stop mining and then you've got these big guys like Bitmain who has 50% of the share, they are the major players. They're like, you know what? We're not going to do anything. We're going to sit here and hold it. What does that mean? That means that you have a supply that is an ever dwindling source. And what are people going to hear about day in and day out on the news? Bitcoin happening. It's happened twice. And the price has exploded. You're going to see FOMO. You're going to see institutional investors. You're going to see people come out of the woodwork or people who were in the game years ago come back in and go, you know what? This is the time to buy. And what's going to happen? You've got demand, but you don't have much supply. I don't know what it is about the people's brain, but, but I talk about this in my other videos. I'm a, I'm a marketer by trade, and I know that people are motivated by two things. They're motivated by fear. They're motivated by pleasure. But the strongest one always, always has been fear. So if I can convince somebody that if they don't take a certain action, they're going to either miss out or it's going to be detrimental or negative to themselves, I can push them in a way to buy a certain product. So what's going to happen as time goes on, people are going to look at this and say, wow, I need to get on top of this. I need to buy it and it's going up. I'm going to miss out and I'm, I'm afraid I'm not going to make any money. And then they just FOMO in. So right now, if you're listening to this video, you're one of those people that have gone against your reptilian brain. You've gone against the whole FOMO and you're still in it. Hopefully you're making small amounts of purchases because it's not going to be Bitcoin that's going to go up. As Bitcoin goes up, so will the altcoins. Ethereum, XRP, EOS, Chainlink, Cardano, my six. And that's what I see is going to happen. So we will see. I believe this to be true and um, we can only find out. So thanks again for watching. Uh, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Subscribe if you like videos like this and leave me a comment below and tell me if you think this is good information or just total BS. Always good to hear the comments. Thanks again, have a happy Thanksgiving.